So here we are at the Wright Brothers Memorial in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. And it's we got some light rain, but look at this big old megalithic structure up here with um, these two guys, Orville and Wilbur Wright. So what's going on guys? So this is a video I've been wanting to make probably for at least a year. Is the Wright Brothers Memorial really an old world building? Now, if you live in Virginia like I do or East Coast, you've been to the Outer Banks and you don't miss the great monument to the Wright Brothers. The first flight in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Now the Outer Banks are barrier islands off the coast of North Carolina and it's a pretty great beach destination. There's something just nice about it. I think that where many places have been so commercialized, and it's not like it's not commercialized, but since I've been a kid, the place has kind of remained the same, which is obviously there's something comforting about that. I remember watching a John Levi video where I think he speculated that the Berry Islands might actually be terraformed. They might actually not be real or real natural, I should say. That's for another video. But onto this monument. This thing is very bizarre. And I think even as a kid visiting this place on field trips, it's just an odd thing. It looks kind of like a lighthouse, I guess. And maybe that's what it's supposed to be, a marine beacon, they say. But what does it really have to do with an airplane, the first flight? But obviously with a new set of eyes I gained over the past year about the old world, Tataria, the mud flood, I started to look at this thing and I'm like, wait a minute. They built this thing, supposedly, during the Great Depression to monument the first flight. So let me read an article about the dedication of this place. On March 2nd, 1927, President Calvin Coolidge signed a legislation authorizing the Kill Devil Hills National Monument. Five years later, a 60-foot granite monument was dedicated in Dare County. Yeah, this thing's made of all granite. Yeah massive stones crazy the monument itself was built on a 90 foot sand dune stabilized through the planting of special grasses the dune was part of a larger natural embankment that the wright brothers used to launch gliders in years leading up to their famed first flight powered in 1903. okay so you got to picture this like i said this place hasn't changed a lot in my lifetime in 1903 nobody probably lived in this place this place must have been so desolate Virginia Beach is a big city now. That's where I'm from. I think it's about 500,000 people-ish. Hardly any people lived in Virginia Beach in the early 1900s. So this place must have been bleak. And there's not a lot of natural hills there. There's sand dunes. And as they said, they planted special grasses to stabilize this kill devil hill is what they call it. And it's interesting. So Calvin Coolidge signed legislation to authorize Kill Devil Hills National Monument. Not the Wright Brothers Memorial, but Kill Devil Hills National Monument. And we're gonna get to that hill in just a minute because I've got some questions about that hill. Designed to mimic the look of a marine beacon, the monument's double entrance doors each have six panels depicting moments from mankind's attempts at flight. The inscription notes the monumentous achievements in history of flight that the Wright Brothers attained at Kill Devil Hills. Here's a real interesting part about this thing. So this thing was built supposedly between 1927 and 1932. Again, right during the height of the Great Depression. Now, I was, I was trying to find pictures of the dedication. Let's read this part of the article. Though the monument's 1932 dedication was expected to draw tens of thousands of people, bad weather kept all but a handful away. Orville Wright was in attendance and the featured guest of honor. In 1953, Congress renamed and designated the monument as the Wright Brothers National Memorial. So that's interesting. So though it was made supposedly for them, I guess, or maybe it wasn't, or that's the question, is it was it was it ever designed to be for them? Because they didn't name it after them until 1953. So why did they need a monument for the Kill Devil Hill? Okay, so like I said, there's, there's, these are just questions. I've got lots of questions about this. Let's read a little bit from Wikipedia. Wright Brothers National Memorial, located in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, commemorates the first successful sustained powered flights in heavier-than-air machine. 
From 1900 to 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright came here from Dayton, Ohio, based on information from the U.S. Weather Bureau about the area's steady winds. They also valued the privacy provided by this location, which in the early 20th century was remote from major population centers. Like I said, hardly anybody lived there. Here's Wiki's take on the administrative history. Authorizes Kill Devil Hill Monument on March 2nd, 1927, it was transferred from the War Department to the National Park Service on August 10th, 1933. The War Department? Okay. Congress renamed it and designated a national memorial on December 4th, 1953. As with all historic areas administrated by the National Park Service, the National Memorial was listed as the National Register of Historic Places on October 15th, 1966. Okay, so it was actually authorized as Kill Devil Hill Monument. Interesting name, Kill Devil Hill. Yeah, so this is in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. So the Outer Banks comprised of like basically Kitty Hawk, Duck, Corolla, Nags Head. Then you get into, further down, you get Rodanthe, Cape Hatteras, Avon, Buxton, Salvo, Waves, you know, Ochre Croak, lots of places. But this place is on Kill Devil Hill. And again, that hill, the shape of the hill is interesting. And again, they got special grasses that somehow prevented this thing from shifting like the normal hills. There's also another big hill, a giant sand dune called Jockey's Ridge. Interestingly enough, is the place where most people do their hand gliding. Not over here. Maybe they can't now, I don't know. But there's some interesting language there which says, it was the first successful sustained powered flight in a heavier than air machine. Okay, so what's interesting is now with the idea of the old world technology, we know that things flew before planes did. Airships. There's early depictions of airships from the 1600s. And the first successful crossing of the English Channel by an airship was done on January 7th, 1785. So obviously that's well before. And this is what they tell us. We're told this. This is well before... Orville and Wilbur Wright, the brothers from Dayton, Ohio. Okay, so here's some sketchy details about Orville and Wilbur. Neither were ever married. Neither had kids. Neither graduated high school. It sounds like there's not a lot of records going back very far about these guys, other than their two brothers out of seven kids. Yeah, Orville lived to be 76, but he never got married, never had kids. And then you have Wilbur, who actually only lived until 1912, less than 10 years after the first flight. He died of typhoid fever. Pretty interesting. It kind of seems like these guys, at least Wilbur for sure, is kind of like a ghost. Maybe because this story is fishy. <laughs> Maybe. Now let's just talk about the structure. Again, it's very odd to be have anything to do with them or Kill Devil Hill specifically. It does kind of look like a lighthouse, a marine beacon. And it's got massive granite stones. It's kind of got this sun etching on it. When I first saw it, I thought it looked like a wing, maybe like a feathered wing, not a plane wing. But no, it's, it's clearly the sun in the corner here. And what's really interesting is that it's the base it's set on. The base it's set on is, it looks like a star fort. Yeah, def very clearly a star fort. And not only that, the whole hill has what I see as sacred geometry. The walkways, the way you have to walk up around this thing. And again, you think about it, if this was a sand dune, just stabilized by special grasses, I mean, you put this thing on here, I don't know how much it weighs. It seems crazy that would, would grass prevent this thing from sinking? I mean, I don't think so. But not only that, the walkways. The walkways have this sacred geometry. The roads going around it is a perfect circle. Like literally a perfect circle. That's weird. It's like, so you gotta think about it. This thing was built in 1927, or between 1927 and 1932. They're building this perfect circular road, these strange geometric shapes in the walkways. And then again, a star fort with this marine beacon on top of it. And ever since I was a kid, you could never really go inside this. For some reason, it was always closed. 
And what they say is they had to improve this thing because there was water seepage into the monument. Now let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the doors. What's interesting when you start to look up at the doors is you have to walk up steps up on top of the star fort and then you have to walk down steps into the door. Again, like this kind of reminds me of a lot of the old world structures where the mud flood caused some kind of a, a changing of wherever the ground was. And so why this thing leaks is because the star fort is higher than where the doors are set. So water leaks down into them very obviously. And this place obviously gets a lot of storms, a lot of hurricane activity, a lot of nor'easters. It's a turbulent place. As they said, it's very windy. So yeah, I'm sure this place does leak. Supposedly there was a time where you could actually go up inside this thing. But as far as I know, I've never met anyone who's ever been inside, much less go up inside of it and go to the top. What's up there? The top of it almost looks like there once was something else on top of it. Much like a lot of the old world tech that's been removed, like when they have domes or antiqua tech, like antennas and things, was this one something else? And what I find really interesting, the conclusion I started to come to when I started to look at the hill is it possible we're just looking at the top of something? What is underneath the grass and the sand? Is there something under there? Is there something buried? I think there probably is. Because if you look around the edges, it does really look like it goes much further down. And again, I think it's interesting if it was just built on sand, wouldn't it sink? Wouldn't they have to support it in some kind of way? Obviously, grass is not supporting this. This thing weighs, I mean, again, it's, it's 60 foot tall. The granite blocks are massive, and there's lots of them. I think that's very suspect. And to add to my skepticism on how this thing or when this thing was built, I tried to find construction photos of this thing. And when you look at the construction photos, the two pictures I did find I see scaffolding, I see sticks, and I see like wood planks leading up the sand dune. I don't see any blocks. I don't see anybody installing any blocks. I mean, can you imagine the kind of equipment it would take to move this stuff through soft sand? And again, this is a time when this place was pretty bleak. There wasn't a lot of stuff in the Outer Banks. They would build this monument to Kill Devil Hill or Orbel and Wilver Wright. Uh, I don't know. Picture number two, I'm still not seeing a lot of construction. I see scaffolding once again. I see a crane, but I don't see any blocks. Where are the blocks at? What, what's going on? I mean, like I said, these are, these are the only two examples of any pictures, and they're both from January 5th, 1932. Supposedly, it was dedicated on November 14th, 1932. And they don't look like they're almost done. They look like they got a lot of work. And like I said, I don't see any other blocks. There's no stacks of blocks sitting around there. And what seems absent to me is the base, the star fort. That's weird, it's not in those pictures. Is it possible they had to dig down to uncover the star fort? Maybe that's what they were doing then. Maybe this was a part of restoring what was already there and maybe doing some excavation, just saying. And what's really interesting is I found out something I, I didn't know. Once again, like as I live pretty close to here, there was something else that was hidden and it was something I saw last year. In 2003, they built this monument to the Century of Flight. And I walked over to this thing and it's got all these stainless steel pillars. It's really bizarre. These things are like, what, like stainless steel or something? They're not made of stone. But look, you see, see they get the flat earth map here. Look guys, they're showing you how planes go around the earth. <laughs> they go sideways. <laughs> oh, look at that. The real bizarre part about it was, again, I live really close to here. And it, when you drive into the Outer Banks, you go through Kitty Hawk, that's the first town you kind of get to. And this thing is right at the beginning except for they don't really advertise that it's there. Like, if you don't know about it, you don't know about it. Again, so I didn't learn about this place until it was there for 20 years, because everybody knows about the Wright Brothers Memorial. You can't miss it. It's a national landmark. You can see it from the road. This is hidden behind, like, trees and everything. 
it's tucked away and it's just odd i mean to me it's got it's got a sun worship feel to it again i don't know what else it might be but i think with all those pillars and the way they gleam in the sun and i could imagine there's some kind of solstice effect i need to check that out to confirm it but there's just something so odd about it anyways you guys what do you think am i reaching bro or is this an old world relic what do you guys think? And tell me if you guys want to see more videos like this. I appreciate all your support. Love you guys. God bless.